our third episode of Springside Spade and Spoon Online. It's our second uh, kitchen episode, but our third one. Hopefully you've checked out our knife, uh, knife skills and safety and our garden tour and chicken update that Jane did as well. Today's episode is going to be all about pizza. So I'm going to talk to you about how to make some pizza doughs, uh, a couple of different options. Also going to talk to you about how to make a really sort of thin, crispy base as well and some little tips with that. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoy. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is get started with our yeast. So I'm the recipe that I'm using today is from Sally's Baking Addiction. I like her website. She does lots of um, great posts, step-by-step -step videos. I'll chuck a link down for it as well. Um, I haven't made this pizza dough of hers but it's pretty similar to some other ones that I've made and she does a lot of recipe testing. So I feel like she's a pretty good resource. Um, so warm water you need. Now yeast needs warmth to kind of to activate. And if your water's too hot, you're going to kill off the yeast, which you don't want because the yeast is what helps your pizza dough to rise. Uh, so it should be, if you put your finger in the water, it should feel warm, but it shouldn't be hot. Um, sort of just hotter than sort of blood temperature. So if you put your finger in, you should be able to feel it. That's what you want. So I've got 330 mils of water. And to this, I'm going to add some yeast. So yeast uh, can come in different forms. You can have fresh yeast, which you can get for some bakeries, which is really beautiful to work with. But the most common um, sort that we tend to use home bakers is your dried yeast. Uh, at the shops, you can get it in sort of a big container like this, if you're lucky enough. At the moment, it's pretty hard to get. And if I open it up, it looks like this inside. Sometimes you can also get your hands on, it comes in little sachets and these are really convenient because these are all usually seven grams and that's usually the right uh, amount to make most um, bread bases and doughs. Uh, so you can either go with um, either of those options. So into my water, I'm going to add in my yeast and I think it was two and a half teaspoons or seven grams of yeast. So into my warm water. Then I'm going to add in some sugar. Uh, the sugar will just kind of, it gives the yeast something to eat and to start it to, to activate. So one tablespoon of sugar goes into that as well. So I'm just going to give it a little gentle stir. I want to be gentle with this yeast. Okay. And then you need to leave it for about five minutes till it starts to froth and activate. So I'll just put that to the side for now. So if you can't get your hands on yeast at the moment, there are a couple of different options. Uh, one is to make a dough without any yeast at all. And I watched a Jamie Oliver show the other day. He's been doing a great program, Keep Calm and Cook. And he made a pizza in a frying pan and he just used like a bread base, just flour and water. And it was like a deep dish sort of pizza. And that was really, that looks really tasty. So that's an option. Other things that you can do as well is you can make pizza on pita bread or flatbreads, muffin, uh, like your English muffins as well. Uh, they can be other options rather than um, doing a normal yeast baked dough. Uh, the other thing, if you're a bit more of an adventurous cook or up for the challenge, you could try making a sourdough starter. So I've just fed mine. You have to feed it once a week. And it requires a little bit more patience and a little bit more care, but I made really delicious sourdough pizza dough the other night. And uh, that's another option. So that's using wild, wild yeast, okay, which is pretty cool, pretty scientific. So while my yeast is doing its thing, I'm going to measure out my dry ingredients. So I have a big bag of flour, courtesy of some good teacher friends who have hooked me up, um, which I'm almost halfway through, which is, shows how much baking and cooking I've been doing at the moment. In here, I'm going to add three and a half cups of plain flour. So if you can get your hands on some strong pizza dough, that would be awesome. If not, if it's just regular plain flour, that's fine too. Okay, so you want to level it off. Whenever you're baking, you want your measurements to be accurate. Okay, two. Another one in here. Three. And then a half. I think that's actually my quarter there. So... Using my math skills, two quarters is a half. Okay. So then into this, I'm going to add in some salt and I need three quarters of a teaspoon. Now, my teaspoons have actually gone missing. I could only find my quarter teaspoon because my kids unpack the dishwasher and I have no idea where they put them. Anyway, uh, 
using my fraction knowledge. So if this is a quarter teaspoon, I'm going to need three of those, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. So I've added my salt to my flour rather than my yeast mixture. And some recipes are a little bit different. Sometimes recipes you'll find they add them to your yeast mixture. I don't like to because the yeast kind of, uh, the salt stops the yeast from doing its thing. So um, I'm going to add it to the flour mixture instead. Okay, so it's been about five minutes and I can see that my yeast is uh, starting to activate. There's little bubbles happening, which is good, and I can smell it. it. smells like bread. So that means that I'm ready to start to add this to my dry ingredient. Two tablespoons of olive oil going in with my yeast mixture. The other thing with yeast as well is uh, refrigerate or freeze this. It helps to extend the life and it doesn't affect the quality of it either when you use it. So you make sure you've mixed that salt in with your flour and then I'm going to add this in. You can make this in a stand mixer as well. That's what the recipe suggests. But it's a little bit noisy when videoing so I thought I would do it old school way. Plus I like to make a mess. All right, so I can see that this is still quite dry. I'll have a little feel with my hands, see if I can bring it together. So I'll see a little bit of uh, dried flour down the bottom. And every time you work with flour, the amount of liquid you need is always different. It depends on the type of flour that you've used, uh, the moisture content in the air as well. So I might just grab a little bit more water to add in. A little splash, less is more. When I see that's starting to come together, I'm going to tip that out onto the bench and give it a really good knead as well. Bench is nice and clean. Chuck some flour down because you don't want your dough to stick there. It's the messy fun part. All right, tip your dough onto your bench. Bowl to the side. Okay, a little bit of flour on your hands as well. All right, and you really want to get in there and give it a really good knead. Okay, so when we're kneading, we're using the palm of our hand here, okay? And you're kind of pushing it down, rolling it back. Push it down, roll it back. And you want to give this a really good knead until it starts to become nice and elastic and springing back. So this recipe makes two large pizzas. If you've got a bigger family or a hungry family, I'd recommend doubling this recipe. The best thing about pizza dough is you can make it you can make it ahead of time. You can make it and freeze it as well. Um, you can make it the day before if you find you're a little bit time poor and you want to do this on the weekend. You can make it on Saturday. Uh, leave it overnight to rise. It actually has a better flavour when you leave it overnight. And then on Sunday you've got your pizza, pizza dough ready to go. And if you don't eat it all, um, you can just um, portion it up. Wrap it up in Glad Wrap or put it into a Ziploc bag and label it so it doesn't become a mystery freezer dish and um, chuck it in the freezer for another day for an easy weekend or weeknight meal. So I've got a glass bowl here that I've just put a little bit of olive oil in that helps to help the dough to rise up. And you want to keep it warm. So yeast likes warm. It's like tucking in a baby. Uh, you could use uh, some Glad Wrap or a tea towel and pop this in a warm, sunny spot on a windowsill. Okay, so my pizza dough has been resting for about an hour, maybe a little bit longer, and you can see it's definitely risen up. So this is the stage where you would punch the air out, okay, and split it in half. So later on I'm going to be showing you how to roll out the pizzas and a couple of different things, toppings that we like to put on ours. And I'm going to be cooking them in a wood fire pizza oven, but not obviously everybody has one of those. And that's fairly recent for us. So a couple of things that we do to create a really thin, crispy base and so that it cooks underneath, because that's probably the trickiest thing to get right, because um, often pizza can be quite doughy because our home ovens don't get as hot as commercial pizza ovens. So what you can do is you can buy a pizza stone or we also bought a terracotta tile and that was just from the garden shop. So these are ours here. You can tell they've been well loved. And I chuck them in the oven. I turn my oven up maximum temp. Then I make my pizzas on the board and I use some semolina on there and I open the door and I kind of throw them onto the board and that way that starts cooking straight away from the base up and achieves a really sort of crusty pizza, which is pretty delicious. 
So pizza is a great way to use up lots of uh, leftover ingredients, bits and pieces, chuck some extra veg on and things like that. Uh, I'm going to show you two of my family's absolute favorite and they're both vegetarian. Uh, we're going to be doing a potato pizza and these are potatoes that I grew in the garden, which is cool, and some tomatoes as well. And I've got some of our leafy greens here too. Okay, I want to show you a couple of things that I do to kind of improve the flavor and spice things up a little bit. So with my um, tomato base, my passata, which is just your regular passata, I add in some chopped garlic and some dried herbs or fresh herbs, which is what I've got. I've got some thyme. You could add thyme, dried basil or um, oregano to it, and that would be really nice. Uh, the other sauce that I make up for my pizzas is just some garlic oil as well. So that's just chopped up garlic and some olive oil. Okay, so you want to roll it out nice and thin because it will spring back as well. So... And you want to make sure you've got plenty of flour underneath your board because it's really frustrating when you roll it out perfectly and then you go and pick it up and it's stuck to the board. Okay, so once you're happy with the sort of um, the thickness of your dough, I'm going to put it onto my board. My hot tip is to make it onto your pizza paddle or um, your chopping board, whatever you're using, um, to slide it off. Because if you make put your toppings on it while it's on this board, it's really hard to then transfer it. So before I put it on my paddle, though, I'm going to put down some semolina. Okay, uh, this helps to stop it from sticking, and it's kind of helps it to kind of roll off the board as well. All right, so dough goes on okay so for the base of my potato pizza I use my garlic oil okay so put some um, little dollops of that on then I'm going to spread it out with my pastry brush it's got a fair bit of garlic in this one so it'll keep the vampires away just going to spread that out and that oil will help to give the dough a really nice golden color as well and crisp it up a bit Okay, then I'm going to lay out my potatoes and you want to make sure that these are chopped really fine, really thin. So if you're not great at chopping really thin, you could use a food processor uh, or otherwise another alternative is to just pre-cook them beforehand because otherwise I find that your pizza cooks and your potatoes not cooked if they're too thick and that's not nice to eat raw potato. So I'm just going to lay out my potato. You can make any sort of patterns that you like. Or make it a bit more rustic like mine usually are. Okay, so this is a pretty simple pizza. Sometimes I find uh, simple is best and it helps it to cook a little bit more evenly. If you've got too many toppings on there, it can get a bit soggy underneath. I'm going to add to that some rosemary because potato and rosemary and garlic is a delicious combination. So rosemary goes on as well. Okay, just sprinkle that around. I'm going to add on a pinch of sea salt as well, or you can just use normal salt, because potatoes love and need salt. Okay, I'm also going to add in some boccaccini. So that's just little mozzarella, which I'll just tear up and add on. If you've got this, great. If not, you can just use normal cheese, but I like boccaccini. Okay, and lastly, I'm going to give it a bit of a sprinkle with, um, I'm just using pizza cheese. You could use Tasty, mozzarella, you can make your own blend. Um, I just went for convenience. And a good little sprinkle of cheese. Okay, lastly, I like to put a little bit more of the garlic oil just around on top, a few little bits and around the edges. Okay. When this one comes out, I'm going to add anchovies because I like the saltiness, little salty fish. Uh, my kids don't love these, so I'll add them on my own separate. And then we also put some uh, rocket on top as well. So you've kind of got that salty and that bitter flavours going on. So this is our other favourite flavour, which is just a margarita. And we've just put our um, tomato base underneath, some sliced tomatoes, boccaccini and some um, grated mozzarella as well. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be using my wood fire pizza oven to make the pizzas, but um, obviously not everybody has a wood fire pizza oven um, and using your oven inside is absolutely okay. <laughs> Thank you.
I hope you guys have enjoyed our first episode all about homemade pizza. Remember that you can use any base that you like, but if you've got a little bit more time up your sleeves and want to do something together as a family, homemade pizza dough is really beautiful. Uh, make sure you send some photos, videos of you guys cooking or share your family's favorite recipe. Uh, we'll see you next week. Bye.